welcome, I'm Alas Garajuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. Since the launch of the electronic procurement system Prozora Sale in Ukraine, small-scale privatization has already brought 1 billion hryvnias to the state budget. Over nine months, more than 500 state-owned facilities were sold. To talk more about this issue, we welcome to the studio today Alexei Sobolev, director of the state-owned enterprise Prozora Sale. Hello and thank you for joining us. Uh, hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. So. 1 billion hryvnias over a nine months period. How would you evaluate this result? Uh, you just compare that to how much uh, the government was generating uh, before the new system was introduced. Uh, it is to extent of uh, 100, 200 million hryvnias a year. A year, the so whole in, year. in nine months we did like five times that. Mm -hmm. Well, I do remember um, in December 2018, uh, Maxim Nefedov, uh, Deputy Minister of Economic Trade and Development, he was talking about uh, 524 million hryvnias over five months, and basically mm -hmm. four more months, and we are reaching one billion. So yes. the pace is kind of growing, or what is the tendency now? Um, we think that the tendency for the pace is to be a bit slower. So uh, the small privatization is the same for government-owned assets and for municipalities owned assets. So half of the of this uh, 1 billion green was generated through government sales and half through local uh, cities and villages sales. Mm -hmm. And what we see that the uh, the, the pace of the villages sales and city sales is growing while the government lacks the assets that are ready for sale. It needs to do something to uh, to put them into an auction system. Mm -hmm. What does this, what assets does this billion include? Real estate? Yeah, mostly, mostly real estate. Mostly so, real estate. Uh, some, some are state-owned companies, like big enterprises, but they are mostly, most value there is, is about real estate. Mm -hmm. So only a few of them were sold as a functioning businesses. And, but the rest is just uh, different real estates in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I also would like to refer again to Maxim Nefedov, Deputy Minister of Economic Trade and Development. Uh, he was uh, telling one extraordinary story about a village uh, that sold an uh, inoperative water supply and received a 2.5 year budget sum to its treasury. Yeah. Um, 2.5 um, million, uh, no, 2.5 year. So could you tell us more about this uh, interesting cases, some unusual cases that uh, Prozora sales have seen during these nine months of uh, having this small scale privatization. Well, the the most favorite of us is that we privatized the Lenin statue. So Lenin privatization, which is a bit funny. Uh, <laughs> and it, it was really competitive auctions uh, for 14 bidders. Uh, for 14 four bidders were yeah. fighting for Lenin statue. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how much did it cost? Uh, around um, the four, I guess, 100,000 grivenas. So still a lot. Mm -hmm. So th there's a lot of scrap and some, I guess, some value. Well, I don't know. Uh, for for this case, this is one of the like uh, great cases where um, the village didn't have the access to the market. It had these pipes lying around for five years. Then just uh, it puts uh, them on for sale and it, it generates around like five million grivenas and that's uh, 2.5 uh, annual budgets. And here you go, here you have money for your roads mm -hmm. and other development. And this, let's just remind uh, the audience that uh, small scale privatization means that the assets would cost up to 250 million hryvnias. Yes, this is correct. the maximum price. Everything that goes above, this is a large scale privatization. So everyone understand. Okay, please continue. Yeah, uh, the, the other ones, uh, we had a really, really successful auction in Lviv, uh, which auctioned a, um, a, a part of real estate on the city's main square, uh, which all the tradings and tourists uh, and the restaurants happen. So, and the price per square meter there during an auction was $16.6 thousand mm -hmm. per square meter. This is like compared to, to, I don't know, New York real estate prices. I didn't know that we had such uh, prices uh, in this country, but that's like uh, it was really competitive auction there, and that's the actual price uh, that the business is ready to pay. This is the the most successful lot, yes. Yeah, probably yes. Mm -hmm. What was the most expensive lot? Uh, I uh, I can't really recall, but m might be either one of the factories, old factories uh, like. Um, 
some old machinery plant, they sold around uh, 50, 70 million grivnas. Mm -hmm. And um, can you remember what was the maximum price growth uh, during the auction? During the auction, probably one of the uh, Kyiv auctions. So Kyiv is rather slow to put things for sale for in new process of small privatization, but it did put several uh, real estate, small real estate objects uh, just this year. And these were the most competitive auctions that we had. More than 100 people turned on uh, to participate in them. And the price increase there were a couple of thousand of percent because the, the balance sheet value of these assets was really low, mm, 10,000 grivnas, and the the actual price was uh, around 10 million grivnas. Millions. Well, yes, I read an information about 80,000 percent, which yeah, is yeah, quite yeah. impressive figure. Um, did you face any any challenges within these nine months when you were conducting these uh, electronic auctions? The, there were, of course, some challenges because the, the process is new. It, it took time for the state services to accommodate. And first they were opposing that. Right now they're happy because they don't have, they don't receive complaints mostly. Uh, they don't they get prosecuted for that because this is like really transparent and uh, everything and is online. And very convenient. Yeah. And uh, the, the problem right now, uh, what we're facing is that uh, the government just uh, uh, doesn't have the items ready for sale. So all the inventory of items that were ready throughout the last 10 years is mostly sold right now. We're talking about small-scale privatization. Small-scale privatization, yeah. So mm -hmm. in this country we have... Uh, you don't have th any more assets to sell. Yeah, the, we have 3,500 uh, state-owned companies, right? So we sold maybe maybe 10, 20, like 50, okay. Uh, but, but then there's like 3,000 left. More. And they need to be transferred from the different ministries and uh, central government bodies to the state property fund and then state property fund sells them. So this process okay. takes time. But these um, over 3000 companies, they are not large scale. Uh, yeah, they are yeah. not. Is yes. this, are they about large-scale privatization? No, no, or no. About small just hundreds of them would be above the threshold. The rest would be below the threshold. So they, they so most of them are in uh, your competence, in the competence yes, of Prozora yeah, yeah. sales. And mm -hmm. they also like the, there's uh, the, the list of the items is uh, uh, voted by Verkhovna Rada. Mm -hmm. So Rada um, even approved like many of those companies to to be able to be put for sale. But then there's this process of transfer and it takes time. And yeah, uh, we would love to make it happen quicker. So the stumbling block is that the ministries are not sending the list of these properties yeah. to the Verkhovna Rada to submit and transfer those no, no, no. properties they, they, to the not, state property fund. No, they're not transferring the properties to state to property state fund. Property fund. Yeah. And then state property fund does the procedure For sale, yeah. on its own. Okay, well, um, what is the reason that the small privatization has so much success and comparing to it, the large scale privatization is falling so short? Because we know that uh, none of the enterprises from the list of large scale privatization um, had been sold in 2018. Last year, Ukraine um, was hoping to get 21.3 billion hryvnias uh, and basically didn't sell any huge enterprise. We just had some revenues on the small-scale privatization. Uh, I would say that the first thing would be the court system. So this is one of the things that like all international uh, organizations and local business call to reform. Because uh, with the big privatization, you're talking about uh, like 10 auctions. And each auction could be easily blocked by court. And regardless of the price, so we, we've done tens of thousands of auctions and we see how easy it is for anyone to go and block the auction. And if it is small privatization, then people usually reschedule the auction like immediately. So it just postpones the sale. If it's a large uh, scale object, then uh, investors wouldn't come if they're not sure if the transaction would be legal. So that makes the whole situation much more complicated. Mm -hmm. And just because there are just 10 items, I guess, of the big privatization, it is much easier for 
all the like interested parties uh, to block to block each other yeah. basically. Yeah. So this is the whole, this is a big game that somebody is playing. Yeah, because it, it is uh, there's a bottleneck there, so you can easily block the the whole process. But in small with the lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In small privatization, there are thousands of items, so it would be hard you, uh, for you to block thousands of them. Yeah. But um, it is easy to block this process, but as far as I understand, this situation bears um, a big risk for Ukraine's economy because uh, this year Ukraine is expecting 17 uh, billion hryvnias um, to be brought to the state budget, right? And if uh, we do not manage to sell these enterprises, there is going to be a hole in the state budget that somebody will have to cover somehow and um, this bears some threat. Um, what do you think, what can Ukraine's government do about it? What is the, what is the dialogue? Um, regarding the, the big privatization there, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. We're not, um, we're not specialists in, the, uh, in that. And what we said- uh, Your spheres are divided. Yeah, mm -hmm. what we can help with is transparency. But since the number of transactions for big privatization is such small, uh, so that anyone has like all the information there is. It is highly pub publicly visible. For small privatization items, nobody really looks into that, and that's where we help. Mm -hmm. So here we, we can't really help uh, much, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, comparing large-scale privatization and small-scale privatization, if these objects uh, of large business are going to, and the auctions are going to be postponed, the objects are going to uh, stay an operative, uh, does it decrease their price so they can possibly uh, join the list of the small-scale privatization or no? It is. Uh, so there are s several objects that are just, just above the threshold of uh, 250 million hryvnias. So, and this is like the balance sheet value. Uh, with, uh, with them operating to a loss in, in, I guess, in a year, they can, some of them could fall under the threshold and they would be put uh, for sale through us. Mm -hmm. And I guess with us, the, the whole procedure is much quicker and less complicated. So, which means it is harder to block because if you block it, you just postpone it for a month. So, yeah, we, we, we could help with several of those in, in, in that manner. Well, um, let's hope that the Ministry of Economic Development and, and Trade is right about its expectations that uh, this process is of large-scale privatization is going to be unblocked in, in mid-2019, but speaking of the success of small-scale privatization, uh, we have already said that there was the first billion hryvnias. What are your expectations until the end of this year? Uh, so we expect uh, the pace to be roughly the same because the state would uh, sell less and the cities would probably st uh, sell more. And we hope that Kyiv will actively engage into small privatization procedure. Uh, Dnipro, we know that they are really struggling to do that. And uh, all the rest, like, uh, for example, Kherson hasn't done anything about that so far. So it's up to the local uh, activists uh, to see that the, the city is transparent and... Uh, Transferring yeah. the properties to the state property fund. Or if it's the city, the city sells it, uh, itself. So the city just wants, uh, n needs to want to have political will to... The city administration, the city yeah, municipality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. to sell it transparently, because mm -hmm. this is, uh, to be frank, this is uh, the problem there. Mm -hmm. Some cities doesn't really want to be, to have transparent, like market-based uh, auction to, to receive market-based prices. Mm -hmm. What cities are the most open for this? Lviv, definitely. Lviv is the yes. most open, yes. Um, and the very last question, how do you develop this dialogue with the cities? And also, you mentioned the ministries that would need to transfer some properties to the state property fund, so then um, this small-scale privatization can um, just um, speed up the process and uh, sell the properties faster? 
Uh, well, we have support of the large community. It's not just us as a state-owned company and the Ministry of Economy and Trade. We have support of Transparency International Ukraine, uh, which is our like key uh, NGO, non-governmental organization supporter. And that it helps us to build these networks of activists in different parts of the country. And many uh, also uh, state, uh, uh, state employees or state organizations also support us as they see us as a vehicle for reform, because mm -hmm. uh, more transparency, uh, more uh, online uh, digitalization uh, of this of these uh, their processes brings them added value. They feel less pressure. Uh, they feel less work, and uh, yeah, they just can do their jobs without any political interference. Mm -hmm. So the activists are mainly pushing for this issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your interesting comments for clearing this issue far out for us, and thank you so much for being a guest today in our studio. Thank you. That was Alexey Sabolev, director of the state-owned enterprise Prozoro Sale. Thank you for watching Head to Head and stay tuned for more with UATV.